Number two of the most important leg exercises you should be doing is the deadlift. The hamstrings are among the most commonly injured muscles by recreational weightlifting and sports participants. So if you're somebody that likes to take part in company softball games or you like to go work out at the gym, you really have to be careful about those hamstrings. So if you ask a sports injury doctor or a physical therapist, they'll probably tell you that the hamstrings are among the most commonly injured for recreational athletes just because they often don't get trained as much because you don't really see hamstrings too often. You see the quads in the mirror when you're looking at yourself, but very few guys especially look at the back. Girls usually see the back of their muscles because they're trying to get a good selfie, but that doesn't mean that guys do that as well. So they're not going to be training the quad, the hamstrings as often that they do with the quads. The deadlift is also well regarded by strength and conditioning experts as among the most beneficial exercises for the posterior chain muscles, particularly, of course, the hamstrings. Also, it requires the entire lower body musculature and contributions from upper body strength. Remember, you're carrying a lot of weight which does engage the lats, the core, the arms, the forearms especially, when you're carrying that weight and you're supposed to keep holding onto that weight. So that's going to lead to upper body muscular strength gains as well as the lower body strength. Obviously, you're not going to get super buff in the upper body just by holding a barbell, but there's still some benefits to it, especially when it comes to grip strength. My two favorite deadlift variations are the Romania deadlifts, or RDL for short, since this puts most of the focus on the hamstrings. And actually, most strength and conditioning coaches actually prefer this variation of the deadlift the most because there is a lower risk of injury. Since with a conventional deadlift, deadlift, you're lifting it from the ground, there is a higher risk of a lower back injury, especially with an athlete who's more often than not someone that's very strong, so they can pack on a lot more weight on their barbell. And since athletes are very competitive, they're going to want to push themselves. The last thing any coach wants from their athlete is injuring themselves during training. So that's why very often they go with the RDL more than the conventional deadlift. Doesn't mean that the conventional deadlift is useless. It's definitely very useful. But RDL is a safer option and it targets the hamstrings more accurately, more specifically than it does with the conventional deadlift. My second favorite of the deadlift variations is a trap bar deadlift, also known as a hex bar deadlift. The reason for the two is kind of obvious. If you look at the hex bar or trap bar, or whatever you want to call it, is one, shaped like a hexagon. There are six sides to it. And two, you're inside that hexagon, so you're pretty much trapped. And that's why it's called that. I really like this because just like with the front squat, you're maintaining a taller posture. So when you're not leaning forward quite as much, that means less torque gets put on the lower back. So again, if you're somebody that has a history of lower back injuries, this is a very good option for you to still be able to do a good quality deadlift exercise without really risking your yourself in suffering a lower back injury. It obviously depends on the severity of your lower, lower back injury. If you're somebody that's further down the line that has like really badly herniated discs, then definitely go uh, check with a physical therapist before you do any of these. Other variations that are very good include the good morning. So this one you, is basically an RDL, but you're holding the barbell on your shoulders just like you would with a squat. Feet are a little more narrow like you do with the regular deadlift. And you're simply doing the same motion as the regular RDL where you're letting those hips slide back keeping the core super duper tight, letting the torso come down as the hips slide back so you'll feel a nice deep stretch. Make sure that you maintain the same amount of knee bend as you normally do when you're standing. Don't lock out the knees. Instead, allow a little bit of a bend, letting those hips slide back. With the weight being higher up, this increases the amount of stretch that you'll get in the hamstrings. So you'll be carrying less weight than you would with the RDL when you're doing a good morning. And you have to be really, really careful of, about not allowing that back to be bending as you're doing the exercise. You don't want to be hunched over and straightened out, or you don't want to be straightened and when you're going down, hunch over just because you want the chest to go down lower. You want to make sure that that back 
doesn't bend any more than it did from the beginning to the end of every repetition. Keep it the same. That will help keep your lower back safe. Another good thing about the good morning is that you don't always have to do it with the barbell. You can also do it with the super band. Simply have the super band underneath your feet, up over your head. Make sure that you're resting it on your traps instead of on your neck. You can still do it if it's on the neck, but it'll be really, really uncomfortable. That's why I tell everybody to sit down when they're doing it, get it up, get the band up over their heads. Make sure it's placed on the traps if needed. Have somebody else help you so you could get it right. Because I'm telling you, if you have it on your neck, it's really uncomfortable. Also, there's the single leg deadlift. So this one, you're actually allowing one foot to raise as you're leaning forward. So think of it like the golfer's lift, basically. This is really good, just like the split squat and evening out the strength between each leg. But balance is definitely a big issue for many people when they try this. So it's going to take a lot of practice for most folks to really get the hang of it. If you're really struggling with the balance, a good alternative to this is the B-Sense deadlift. So B-Sense basically means that you're in a slightly staggered stance. The foot, the back foot isn't quite as far back as it is with the regular split squat or with the lunge. It's really just a few inches. The toe is just a few inches, maybe like six inches behind the heel of the front foot. And the movement is basically the same as a regular RDL, where you're really just focusing on those hips sliding back as the chest comes down. Allow the back leg to bend as much, keeping all the weight on the front leg. So that way you could feel all the stretch going on in the front leg and focusing on making that leg doing all the work. Try not to make the back leg help out at all. Just think of the back leg as just like a kickstand. In addition to that, with a single leg deadlift or the B-sense deadlift, if the glutes are something that you're trying to work on as well, doing a contralateral variation is very beneficial to you. What I mean by contralateral is basically you might be only holding one dumbbell on the side opposite to the planted foot. What that does, it adds more stretch and requires the gluteus medius. That's the outside part of the glute, the side part of the glute that is going to be working to be able to maintain that knee stability. Make sure that you don't allow that knee to be caving in as you're doing the exercise. Focusing on making sure that the knee stays aligned with the outside eyelids of your shoes. So you want to make sure with either the B-stance deadlift or the single leg deadlift that you're forming a number seven. So with the leg is angled a bit and the hips are parallel with the ground. This means that you're forming a number seven. For one leg, it'll look like a backwards number seven. The other leg, it'll look like a regular number seven. Maintaining that number seven throughout the repetition, making sure that the foot is directly aligned with your navel. 